Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Mario Versation Pod Comedy Show. I'm your host, Sean D. Walsh, and this is my co-host, Kiru. Hello. So we just had this big Nintendo Direct with like a, it's like the year of Mario. Um, yeah, I feel like we already had the year of Mario. <laughs> it's it's crazy. This is the most, I think the most Mario content we've ever gotten in a Nintendo Direct. Like a single Yeah, one, and like... we had like a Mario 35th Anniversary Direct, and yeah. this had more. Yeah, this had more than that. It's it's a uh, a lot of unexpected announcements for sure. Super uh, like out of left field announcements. It First, also felt like there's a lot less pointless filler like games. Yeah. Oh, Nintendo. absolutely. Yeah. It was like everything. Even though it was like the same length. They only put the pointless filler like right after the big announcements because they knew the people would still yeah. be freaking out. But we can, we can put... put that one RPG about like being trapped in your own tears or whatever that was. Yeah, we can, after we can put Mario. A, we can put the the Batman ports here. That's fine. <laughs> Yeah, the Batman Arkham sub will like that. <laughs> just Just Dance 2024. Oh, that um, one hard. <laughs> that pirate was going off. <laughs> but just so, so just going through the, the games, first of all, Super Mario RPG getting a, a fully fledged remake, like ground up. That was the first one, wasn't it? Yeah. That was the first uh, Mario announcement we got and it was, um, it was crazy. I was like, no way, that's, that's real, you know? Like, no way in a million years would Super Mario RPG get remade, because Square Enix and the rights and, you know, mm. like, there was, it was an impossibility. Um, yeah, and as well as that, like, the way the trailer's set up makes you think it's gonna be, like, Nintendo Switch Online, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, and then it, and then the, whatever, whatever it is, Geno Sparkle comes oh, in. Oh, right. yeah. Oh my god. And then suddenly, it's real. It looks great. Graphically, it, it looks fantastic. Like, there's no longer blue voids in the backgrounds oh, of, yeah. of stages, which <laughs> is a nice touch. The art style, with like the character design, took a while to get used to. Yeah, I'm. But I, th I think I'm starting to come around on it. I'm still not quite there. Um, I think I would much prefer if Mario, Peach, and Bowser were not like chibi. Mm -hmm. Definitely, it's nice that they're going for accuracy, but um. I think in some places, some uh, enemy designs could have done with some <laughs> updating. Uh, you know, you know. Like Valentina. Believe that Valentina's in the closet. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's actually interesting, um, Super Mario Bros. Well, they didn't update her design. They, they, gave, her the, they yeah. gave her the margarita. They gave her a margarita because her Japanese name is, is Margarita. Chain Kongs are back. They look terrible. Um, I think they were trying to emulate the original sprite, but I think they... They mixed up what was shadow and what was dark flesh. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, so his, like, the eyes just look completely wrong. The Smithy Gang's back, Gino's back, Mallow's back. They all look great. Yeah. It's, I, I was mean, surprisingly happy about with Mallow, like. <laughs> yeah, I think it just looks, looks so good. There's a couple of weird animations, I thought. Like, when, when Bowser backs into Booster Tower's door, that looks, like, really stiff mm. to me. But generally, the, yeah. the animation's really good looking. It's almost like a contrast then with um, those like special attack animations we saw, which are like so clean. Yeah, they look pre-rendered, honestly. I'm pretty sure they are. Yeah, uh, I doubt that those are in-engine. Really faithful. They've even discovered that Discoon is in the original Super Mario RPG because we saw him. In oh the trailer. yeah, I saw that. <laughs> which is like it's crazy. Nobody knows that before, or maybe people did, but yeah. But yeah, the main was... thing I noticed coming out of it was like Rainbow Road being in it. Yeah. Um, I'm wondering if that's Star Road or if that's just one of Geno's special attacks because we don't Maybe. actually visit Star Road in the original game. That's true. So Maybe like Star Road could be a special attack. Like you get warped there like a final smash. <laughs> Maybe. Um, or maybe there's a maybe there's a Star Road post game where we get to see uh, where Geno comes from. Speaking of Geno, he's a butterfly oh, yeah. now. Was he not before? No, he was a, a, just a regular star before in the original. Oh. And now he's a... Um, oh, good for him, I guess. He's like a <laughs> yellow butterfly that uh, flies into the doll. My, the main two things I, I want from this remake is more content would be nice. Mm -hmm. Because this the original Super Mario 3G is, is a decent game, but very short. You know, you can beat it like in a few hours. So I think if, if they're going like full price, I would like a little more going mm -hmm. on. That'll be, yeah. that'll be something. And the other thing I want, which is way pettier, I want them to remove the hidden block at the start of the game that you can only get once, and if you miss your chance, you can never get it again. <laughs> I want, like, I, I think want they'll that thing probably, <laughs> they'll probably like make it so that it's not a one-time thing, right? Like, would that not yeah, make more sense? I mean, yeah, but like, how you get it, it's like. 
when you go into Peach's castle for the first time, there's like a toad that walks towards you. You have to jump on his head as he walks towards you and then jump up and get the block. And if uh, if he finishes walking towards you before you jump on his head, you can never get it again. <laughs> That's crazy. I had no idea about that. It's awful. <laughs> it's so bad. So like, just just fix that, and I'll be happy to be honest. My my main hope is that uh, we'll get a retranslation or relocalization of the game, um, because the original oh, game yeah. done by Ted Woosley um, of Square my Enix man, at the time, um, he he sucked, um, and he just he didn't get anything right, and he really did a, a bad <laughs> job of the <laughs> translation. He got like Kamek's relationship wrong, didn't he? So in the US, he says, that's my child, question mark. Probably referring to Bowser, maybe Ted Woosley just didn't get the translation right at all. In the original, he says, yeah, the baby from that time, or something like that, referring to Mario. Yeah, no, I would like that, uh, as well as that uh, Bruce Lee can get out of there. That'd be nice. It's true, yeah. Although the original Japanese version is super reference-filled as well. Psychopath, that's another one. <laughs> Psychopath oh, yeah. Mallow's psychopath that. ability. <laughs> but yeah, I'm still still getting used to the weird chibi Mario because he's a uh, he is tiny. He's he like, looks like he looks like small yeah, Mario. He looks smaller than he looks like smaller than small Mario. He's he's like he's like slend more slender than small Mario. But yeah, uh, he's a slender man. <laughs> yeah. Orb user, Gobi, Vomer. Um, those are. Those <laughs> That's kind of funny. The Mario RPG translation is <laughs> graphically it looks fantastic. Uh, we've never seen a Mario RPG like this. Yeah, I just wish it was a little more in keeping with the the sort of main series, I guess, style. But generally, it's fantastic and super accurate. Like seeing uh, seeing that the the question mark chests are still question mark chests and they haven't been turn into blocks or the enemies uh, retain their, their original designs. It's nice. It's just quite nice. Yeah, I, actually, yeah, someone pointed out in the chat, it is kind of a, a better example of how to do kind of the Diamond and Pearl remake that came out a while back for Pokemon, where like it keeps the original chibi style, but it doesn't look awful. Um, have you seen some of the stuff from that remake? It is. It is an experience. I saw its announcement, it didn't look great. But I don't. Yeah, no, they're the generals. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, even to people who like Pokemon, it didn't look great. Yeah, so Boshi's back. Or Boshi. Boshi's yeah. back. Let's call him Boshi. <laughs> um, so yeah, Bo we'll call him Boshi. Boshi's back, and he looks the same. But yep. uh, interestingly, all of the other Yoshis in the game have their modern appearance with the, the shell saddles. Boshi still yeah. has his. His weird, uh, like the weird classic Super Mario World Yoshi saddle. I'm just wondering where he got that shell from. <laughs> maybe it was um, a designer shell. Yeah, maybe he got a custom fit. Never thought that we'd see him again. Never thought we'd see uh, no. any of these characters again, really. Honestly, um, I think on, if I were to pick one Super Mario RPG character, I would like to stick around. It would be Bashi, to be honest. I was uh, super excited to see the Chancellor's back, because the, ch the Chancellor's great. Toads with, uh, with hair are back. Which is uh -huh. uh, which is lovely to see because I was uh, I saw I, I saw you being so excited about this. <laughs> yeah, I mean I, I just uh, having having girl toads with actual hair is so much better than having like Toadette esque yeah. characters with buns. I don't mind how they did it in Bowser's Inside Story, but uh, like fan concepts where they they give all the girl toads Toadette hair. That's uh, that's. Mm -hmm. awesome. Someone um, said, uh, "Do you think Nintendo got the rights to these characters?" Maybe I highly doubt it. I don't think they did. Definitely not. No. This is 100% no. Square is definitely making this. Well, like, I don't this know. Is for a, this sure, is a, this is a truce. <laughs> it just looks like uh, Square is making this game. So I mm -hmm. I couldn't imagine that, that they would uh, have gotten the rights back. Maybe it'll be yeah. easier in the future, though, for these characters to appear in some Mario games. Now this relationship is back open. Hopefully. Yeah. That would be nice. But then again, RPG characters don't tend to appear in other places in general. I'm wondering if the, the Mario and Luigi. Uh, heads have been working on this because they were saying like back I think back when Dream Team came out maybe later that they would love to go back and make a ga another game with Gino and Mallow and the Super Mario RPG characters because 
uh, the Mario and Luigi developers uh, are the same, like, sort of uh, the heads are the same team that worked on RPG. So, right, right, yeah. Same uh, composer and everything. I'm wondering now that Alpha Dream's gone, have they maybe gone back to Square Enix and that's how this happened, you know? Um, I, could, I would like that to be the case. But at the same time, maybe I wouldn't, because that would mean they're kind of... It would be harder for them to work on Mario RPGs in the future. So I guess it's a double-edged sword. Yeah, just just a final uh, note is that Toad in the game, in the original, he kind of like was the exact same in terms of appearance as all the other Toads that were in Peach's staff. Here, he is. Uh, he has his blue vest, which is actually different from what all the other Toads have. They all have red vests now. So they've kind of highlighted that this is the main Toad. Quite nice. It's quite nice. <laughs> uh, here we go. So here's uh, Untitled Princess Peach game for Nintendo Switch. Uh, this yeah, one, this one is weird. <laughs> super weird. Uh, reminds me off the bat of like Luigi's Mansion and like Wario World. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know what the gameplay is going to be or what the story is going to be or really what anything, anything is, is in this game because we saw about 10 seconds of it. Um, I I, I, don't, I can't remember a trailer that's looked like that's told us more and less about a game than this they're, trailer. They're basically just like, it exists. And if she steps on the pedestal, something will happen. <laughs> Apparently. Yeah. So they told us. I think uh, I think Peach looks really good in it. Um, not a fan of the the enemy designs though, or what I assume those are, are enemies. Um, they just there's something kind of off about them to me. I don't know what it is. But it's like they're trying to like be Mario enemies, but they don't quite hit the mark. But yeah, I'm, I'm interested to see more. Peach has a weird uh, ribbon companion, so the game seems to be like clothing themed. Uh, so yeah, like, Harry's probably out. <laughs> Yeah, unfortunately, I, I like this was like our one chance to ever get a follow up on Perry's backstory, and uh, yeah. I highly doubt that'll happen here. I would love if it turned out that the ribbon was his grandfather. <laughs> I'd love it if it turned out that uh, the reason he was turned into a parasol was because the the villains were from this stage clothing mm -hmm. kingdom or whatever, something like that. But that's that's a pipe dream. It's never gonna happen. I'm really wondering who's developing this game because it looks it looks. It looks kind of like next level games. I doubt it's in-house. I really doubt it's in-house, yeah. actually. I feel like it's they a, it a second party. <laughs> because it just doesn't... If it were a second party, I think uh, I think next level games would probably be, make the most sense. Yeah. Although next level games is technically first party now. But, uh... Maybe retro. Oh, I doubt it. Retro's too busy with, <laughs> with Prime 4. Are you sure they are? <laughs> yeah. I'm not. <laughs> um... <laughs> Another thing, Peach is missing her crown, so a lot of people are, are saying it's like Peach's backstory. Oh, she looks younger. It's absolutely not. And that's, not. That makes no sense. She has her princess dress. I'm pretty sure she's still Princess Peach. She's just lost her crown. Um, yeah. I don't know what it would... I don't know what it would imply. If she doesn't have it, does that mean like it's a prequel and like is she like becoming princess like she wasn't before? <laughs> yeah, that's. I think that's what people are getting at, and people like that are, makes no sense. I know because Princess Peach has always been a princess since she was a baby. People are like, uh, like people are pointing that out, and then the people who are saying, "Oh, it's a backstory," are like, "Well, Nintendo doesn't care about continuity anyway." And it's like if they, true. Don't, if they don't care about continuity, so true. why are they making a backstory for Princess Peach? Like, <laughs> <laughs> get your story straight, man. Um, she became princess and then she lost it, and <laughs> and now and she, she spent she's a few years not being princess. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, so a lot of people. Valentina <laughs> stole her crown to become queen. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, it clearly she's doesn't take place in the Mushroom Kingdom. The game will deal with, like the traumatic death of Peach's father, and she'll become Queen Peach. Awesome. There, there isn't much to talk about there, but Luigi's Mansion, Dark Moon, getting Dark Moon, baby. getting a Switch port. I have wanted this since 2021 when uh, Miitopia got a, a Switch port. I was like, okay, this is the chance. Luigi's Mansion 2, please. Yeah. Please. Redemption arc. I it's never, never thought it would happen though. And uh, I am so excited for it because like, I, I love Luigi's Mansion 2. It's it's just gonna be great to be able to play it in HD on the Switch. Yeah. Uh, Scare Scraper from Luigi's Mansion 2. I hope that comes back. 
Oh, because please. That's, it's please. so much better than the one in three, for some reason. Yeah. I'm wondering, is it is it Grezzo, or is it uh, Next Level Games? Or maybe a bit of both, because they, they've worked together before on the 3DS. Grezzo mm. did the Luigi's Mansion 3DS port, and yeah. they did Miitopia Mi on Switch. Yeah. And they did the, the Zelda remakes. God, they've been busy. Yeah, they did League's, League's Awakening on, on Switch, and they did uh, Ocarina of Time 3D and Majora's Mask 3D. It could definitely be Grezzo, but I would be surprised if they were working with Next Level Games on some of this stuff, because like it could be like a background project for them, maybe. Yeah. It doesn't seem like it would be that intensive to you know touch up the graphics of Luigi's Mansion 2. Yeah, <clears throat> like it seems like Grezzo's going to specialize more in remakes, and this looks more like a port. Or a remaster than like any kind of yeah, remake. It's, it's like the Metopia one. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know. I feel like Metopia looks a lot like cleaner. <laughs> yeah, but this is this is very early days. Like if you go back to the Luigi's Mansion Three initial trailer, it, it looks pretty rough, and that game looks fantastic in the final release. So it, I think yeah. it's it'll it'll come a long way uh, between now and next year. I'm interested to see if Luigi's Mansion One will get ported because. Grezzo, like, mm -hmm. especially if Grezzo are making this, because Grezzo made the Luigi's Mansion 1 port itself. Like, uh, a, a, dual, like a dual pack would be so nice. It would be great, uh, but just to have all three Luigi's Mansion games on Switch, and to have Luigi's Mansion 1 in HD would be lovely. You know, it's just fantastic. Oh, yeah. um, and then to have all three on the Switch, which seems to be a pattern with franchises at this point. Yeah, uh, because Pikmin... I mean, yeah, is that that's a segue. That's a segue. That's a segue. <laughs> Pikmin, one to four, all on Switch. That oh, is so nice. That is crazy. Um, because I wanted and to. All it cost was a doorstep battery. I, yeah, I wanted to play Pikmin one and two, um, and this makes things a lot easier. Yeah. Uh, a Pikmin four. It's still very strange to see it being like called Pikmin one though. Yeah, that's that's odd that they've added the one to the logo, but I think it's because it's uh, just... the new they have a new Pikmin logo that's like it doesn't have the flower colors, so I think they added the one to like signify this is like the flowers from the first game. Um, yeah, but it's weird because literally I think today they updated the Pikmin three deluxe logo as well, so now that's. The same as as the logos in one, two, and four. So they all have the new yeah. logo now. Which I'm like, I literally I turned on my switch and I saw it update in real time. I was like, what the frick? Like, yeah, I saw that happen as well. But I didn't even notice like that the title change. I was just like, oh, I guess they patched it or something. And I just moved on with my day. And then I saw your notification. I was like, oh, <laughs> oh, okay. It's like, it's such a weird move. Yeah, isn't it? It's it's quite odd. I'm wondering because I I remember back when. Was it when Pikmin 4 was announced and Miyamoto mm -hmm. like came out and he was like, we also have a new Pikmin logo that we'd like to show you. <laughs> and then they, they like bring up the logo and, it's, and he's like, pretty nice, isn't it? It's on a t-shirt. Buy it. <laughs> um, God, I love Miyamoto. <laughs> yeah, but like, it, like I'm wondering, did Miyamoto like commission this and he's like super proud of it and he's like, we have to put it in everything. Um... There's, there's also the Pikmin Garden website, which is like the Splatoon base site. Um, mm -hmm. it, it's just like full of Pikmin lore, which is really nice. Um, I've not gone in depth on it yet. Is there anything like to point out apart from the fact that the president's in it? There is uh, some interesting revelations. They've got profiles on uh, all the captains and they've got information on... Uh, they, they have kind of a recap of uh, the events leading up to Pikmin 4. And it's it's interesting because, like a lot of there's been a lot of speculation about um, Olimar because as we see in in the Pikmin Four trailer, he's become a a Pikmin. A Pikmin. <laughs> um, so in in Pikmin One, obviously there's the good ending and the bad ending, and uh, when you get the bad ending, Olimar dies, and the Pikmin carry him back to the Onion, and he becomes a Pikmin. Uh, yeah. And so people were saying. They, they saw that it was the original SS Dolphin in uh, mm -hmm. in the footage and that uh, Olimar has crashed and it's been a month. Uh, and the rescue corps is here to save him. And now that he's a Pikmin, there were, you know, there was speculation that it was a timeline split from the original game. Which would have been so cool. It would have been really cool. And uh, I'm, I'm not 100% convinced that it's off the table. I think it's unlikely yeah. at this stage, but because, like, we've seen Louie now... Um, and there's mm -hmm. been mentions of Pikmin 3, 
But the way they've mentioned Pikmin 3 on the site is really weird. Um, uh -huh. because they bring it up like it's, they explain the story of Pikmin 1, all of our crashes. It's like, and then a little while later, yeah, here it is. Planet was discovered by Captain Olimar, a well-known veteran space traveler on the planet Hokotate, who was on a trip when he was struck by a meteor that suddenly flew over him. Not long after that incident, an unmanned probe launched to investigate food resources on planet Kopai discovered the planet. It was named PNF 404. And there's like an image of the Kopai crew, and there's the rescue mm -hmm. corps below that, and it has them all like in the same sort of vein here. And Yes, okay, maybe they, they skipped over Pikmin 2 and it's kind of like an abridged version of events. Or maybe, long shot, but maybe it's split off from the bad ending of Pikmin 1 still, okay? And okay. Pikmin 3 happens regardless of whether or not Olimar gets home. Kopai still has his food mm -hmm. crisis, it still sends out the sparrows. Um, so it could be the case that Pikmin 4 is taking place... <sighs> Uh, in an alt in the bad ending timeline, at the same time as Pikmin three. And would that work then? Because I'm trying to remember. Like the only reason the Copites couldn't get home was because Olimar stole their key, right? Yeah. So if he's not around to do that, they shouldn't have much trouble. They won't need to come into him or deal with the plasma or anything like that. So that that works. That fits. I think. They still need to find the key, though. <laughs> yeah, they, but they it's not like the key, but actively. It, they might they might be able to find it somewhere else, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, Pikmin 2 is on canon now. But yeah, they, uh, they do make it seem like like three and four take place like during or, or after one, like directly after one. It's like weird. Yeah, as it, sh as it should be. <laughs> so that's that there's food for thought. Uh they they added in the glow min. Um, well actually if, if we can say one more thing about the um the bad ending theory. There are like a few holes. But they're less holes and more just like weird things that I guess we'd have to accept if it's true. Yeah. Like Olimar looks a lot more Pikmin y than he did at the end of the bad ending, where it was just Olimar but with a sprout from his head. Although there I feel it's it's that like the when he's in he, the ground. He's like further mutated. Yeah, when he's in the ground he he's like that and then when they pluck him he like grows into the Or maybe like the more Pikmin. Because Pikmin Olimar. can't pluck. The Pikmin can't pluck, right? Uh so Well as as far as maybe we know he they like can't stayed yeah. in there. Maybe just stayed in there vegetating until evil dog showed up and pulled him out. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> well, I think I cracked the code there. <laughs> evil dog. I'm wondering about that actually. What, who is a uh, who is evil Ochi? Who is evil dog? Maybe yeah. it's uh maybe it's Bulby. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Bulby came to find his uh his owner. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> in any case, I feel really bad for Olimar. Um Yeah, he doesn't deserve this. <laughs> Uh, we've, we've seen baby, baby, um, Bulborbs, um, like, between the, the birth stage and the, um, the adult stage, which is crazy, like, yeah. they've been teased since Pikmin, Pikmin One. 2? I think Pikmin 2. Um, but we've never seen them before, and it's like, you know, uh, is that lore ever gonna be addressed properly? And, and turns out it is. So. Yeah, I mean, I want to say Pikmin 1, because, like, that's, in the credits of Pikmin 1 is where it's first revealed that the, uh, Mini bulbs oh, and actual babies. Yeah, yeah, you're you're right. I think. Yeah, I think it was first mentioned well that the the bulbor larva was. Isn't it said that they they sleep in trees or something during the day? I think it says they, they drop right? down at night. I can't remember, but uh. Yeah, it's really weird. <laughs> it's 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 really great to see them. One disappointing thing about the game, uh, or maybe a couple. One is that there's like clear recent remnants of humans and yeah. i know they've done that like to an extent in in two and three especially but uh here it's like pot boiling on the stove still recent but also there are flowers growing in the house is filled with creatures um so i doubt it's being like currently <laughs> lived in but uh the house be filled with creatures <laughs> but it, it it makes the series seem a lot more contemporary contemporary yeah which I, I guess is kind of like, there's always been a thing of, oh, the Pikmin could be right under your nose. But it's never felt like at the forefront of the series. It's always been like a sort of a backdrop. Um, yeah. I mean, like, it's not that out of the question. Because, like, this, the treasures in Pikmin 2 are in pretty good condition. Yeah. But it still felt implied. It's, 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 it's never been, been it's been a while. It, but, it, like, 
not too far in the future, like after humanity's uh, gone. But now, listen, those wonderful Duracell batteries that just keep going and going—that has an explanation. But stuff, <laughs> stuff like the Rob, it should not be in that good a condition. It's 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 weird. Uh, but it, and it'll take some getting used to. But uh, it, I guess it's lore now. Um, and yeah, that's I, that's I, another reason. Really want... Another reason why I think that it might be a prequel is because. As we know, the Pikmin planet has, like, super sped up nature, I guess, in that, like, evolution happens more quickly, the, uh... Continental drift happens yeah. within, like, a week. Yeah, exactly. Like, between Pikmin 2 and 3, which isn't that long, the, the continents reform into a new Pangaea, so it's like... <laughs> yeah, in Pikmin 1 and 2, like, even. <laughs> yeah, in Pikmin 1 and 2, it's, it's established, and that's why, like, all the areas change mm -hmm. between the two games, so it's... It's really and and actually between three and Olimar's comeback, the areas change again. Yeah, no, it's it's kind of weird. <laughs> so if human like remnants are still this intact, maybe this is like before the continental drift gets <laughs> gets that far. All in all, it's probably just set after three, and yeah. this is the fate of our Olimar. Uh, unfortunately, he can never return back. He'll die at the end. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I feel like we've talked about Pikmin for too long. So yeah, everyone in the chat is telling us to stop. <laughs> Maybe we should talk about um, the Mario Kart Eight DLC going from one tiny uh, people in the house to another. We've got a, a yeah. giant bathroom <laughs> map. <laughs> uh, I again have not been following leaks, so I, this took me completely by surprise. But apparently, this has been like a thing for a while. Oh, it's, it's been, been a thing like a for like a bathroom course for like a year and a half. People have been like, "Yeah, the bathroom, the bathroom course is coming." You know, it's 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 just that around sounds the corner. Like really sad speculation. <laughs> Can't wait for guys, the bathroom guys, course. Guys, it's gonna be a bathroom course. Um, so yeah, it's it's uh maybe another room in the Ribbon Road house. Uh, it looks all right to be honest. Yeah, it doesn't okay. look that bad for a, a Mario Kart tour course. Or booster course pass. Yeah. Um, I yeah, see it's, worse. <laughs> it's uh it's fun, and we got three new characters, which I wasn't expecting. I was I was sure it was gonna go one, two, three in terms of the character releases, but uh, no. Yeah, like how normal people would do it. We're getting three characters right now. But this uh, is a booster course pass, where they're coming up with all of this as they go on. <laughs> yeah, we we just got a we got Petey Piranha, um, we got Kamek, and we got Wiggler, which was a surprise because Wiggler isn't even in in tour yet. That's uh that's one less I point for Funky Kong. <laughs> I am I I am personally excited about one of these characters way more than the others. That's just because Kamek is my favorite Mario character, and I'm so happy that he's yeah. in. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. So deserved because he got he got shafted in four in sixty four, mm -hmm. and then Mario Kart eight. He was supposed to be in the base game as well, and then got cut. Yeah. So, I mean, it's he's it's about time. In. It's about time. Um, I'm so happy. And Petey Piranha is great too. He looks Petey Piranha is great. I'm, I guess that makes sense. I'm hoping that uh, Piranha Plant Cove comes in this tour. Because uh, that's a, mm -hmm. a really nice course. Sorry, not this tour. This uh, this wave. And then and, uh, and Wiggler, is still like still gets angry after he gets hit, which is great. I mean, uh, I felt like that would have been too much effort for this uh, DLC. It's <laughs> but nice they to managed see, to put it in. It's nice to see some Mario Kart Seven representation. <laughs> hopefully, it really is. Hopefully, uh, you get Honey you know, Queen. Tor doesn't have enough of that. I think. <laughs> <laughs> I hopefully... think Tor needs more Mario Kart Seven courses. No, that's you're right. I um, I personally hope with all my heart. That the last DLC character is going to be pixelated Donkey Kong Jr. Because <laughs> that would be so funny. That would be awful. I, it would be I the worst. And I wanted it to happen. I think I might have. We'll save that one for later. We'll... <laughs> if that happens, you can, like, lynch me. In all seriousness, Diddy Kong and Pauline mm -hmm. are probably my picks for the last two. How about I you? think Pauline's like a near guarantee. I would say there is... A 90% chance Diddy Kong gets in, and a terrible, terrible 10% chance that's funky. <laughs> I really doubt it'll be funky. Uh, I think the internet really wants it to be funky, and I don't think it's going to be funky. Well, since when does Nintendo do what the internet wants? <laughs> that's true. <laughs> back when... I think back when Mario Kart 8's original DLC came out, the uh, director of the game was in an interview, and he said that uh, he was sorry to fans of Bowser Jr., Dry Bones, and Diddy Kong... Um, and we've gotten Bowser Jr. and Dry Bones, so I feel like Diddy Kong is probably a priority for them, you know? Yeah. Although, wouldn't it be funny if he didn't add it in, and then he put out another statement saying, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry again, Diddy fans. <laughs> <That would laughs> Just didn't funny. work out this time. 
But Diddy Kong <laughs> yeah, is such a staple, and it's it's weird that he's not in Mario Kart 8 in general. So it is. He really is. I kind of it's this weird thing where he's so expected to be in the game that I forget he isn't, and I have to be reminded. Yeah. You know, and I'm like, oh yeah. And yeah, we we got a new new look at the next tour in Mario Kart tour as well. While we're on the topic of Mario Kart, uh, it's got like yeah. Rome. Donkey Kong has a new gladiator outfit. Uh, yeah, he's gonna be eaten to death. Uh, which is which is crazy because we haven't gotten a Donkey Kong alt at all in Mario Kart Tour or really any games. So it's yeah. uh, it's a nice change of pace. Yeah, yeah. I play Tour. I I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. WarioWare. WarioWare movie. WarioWare. WarioWare. I'm so happy. Yeah, I was I was uh, shocked to see another WarioWare so soon because it feels like Get It Together just came out. Uh, Did it? it? I feel like it was like it was like last month <laughs> it came out, right? Yeah, it was. It was. Uh, it's gonna be two years. So wow, which is yeah. really really quick development time. It's like what WarioWare used to be when they used to release like two games a year. <laughs> yeah, I'm almost like worried to be honest. I hope it's good. Uh, although I I had to say from the cover, I, I do like that each. Warrior game, uh, Wario's pose in the cover is getting progressively more and more demented. <laughs> I'm really happy with that. Yeah, it's a nice touch. It's, it looks like it's, uh, Wario takes the gang on a vacation, and then discovers yeah. another temple, like, in Smooth Moves. This one's, like, specifically yeah. a Smooth Moves sequel, isn't it? It is, yeah. Yeah, so the company you... retreat, that's what it is. <laughs> while we're here, while we are yeah. talking about WarioWare, there was a little bit of a weird thing in the trailer where we heard sort of yeah. a, a Wario impression. And mm -hmm. it has raised some eyebrows. It, it was not excellent. <laughs> it was. It, he mean, says excellent, but it certainly wasn't yeah. excellent. It was... Yeah. Uh, good, good one. Good terrible. one. <laughs> uh, I, I could probably do a better Wario impression than whatever All it right, was. Alright, go on. Okay. Ready for this? Yep. This, is, this is where the comedy comes into pod comedy. Get ready for this. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. You have to do one as well. All right. Excellent. See, that's 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 what we're here for, folks. That's that was, that was pretty good. That's pretty good. Now your turn. It's your turn. Do I have to? Yeah, you have to. You have to do it. All right. Okay. All right. Excellent. That was that was awesome. Thanks, thanks. I'm so proud. They should hire me. They should. You, you would make a better Wario than the, uh... Whoever that guy was. <laughs> than that guy, yeah. Um, <laughs> it's clearly not Charles Martinet. So, yeah. hopefully it's the announcer or some just some random Nintendo employee that they got in oh, hope to so. do the voice. But I'm not, I'm not so sure. Mm. It, it could very well be that they've replaced Martinet with some random... <laughs> guy yeah uh, who, who is yet to be announced uh, properly um that would be awful but here's uh here's the big thing the thing i'm sure everybody's mm -hmm. been waiting to hear about yeah. super mario bros wonder yeah uh super mario bros i sure do wonder what they were thinking with that <laughs> elephant power up <laughs> got him <laughs> uh yeah it's it's it looks really good I'm super excited for it. It's it's yeah. like it's, it's like the perfect evolution of what New Super Mario Bros has done. Um, can we just like leave it there? Like after spending like 15 minutes talking about Mario RPG, can we just go like, yeah, Wonder looks <laughs> alright, and just leave it? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't I don't have that much to say because uh, <laughs> it looks good. It just looks really good. Um, Mario, you know, sticking with RPG, there's a trend of of really chibi Mario characters for some reason these days. Yeah. Um, and, uh, I'm, I like, I'm not a huge fan of the models, uh, I think we, we're taking a step back from, like, uh, you know, Odyssey and Super Mario Party and, and yeah, yeah, mm. these games, uh, Luigi's Mansion 3, um, but I, I think the animation is incredible, I love the, how alive the world feels, how alive the enemies feel, mm -hmm. it's got these new, uh, these new Toad guys equivalents, yeah, so, so the game takes place at least partially in the Flower Kingdom. Bowser seems to be the villain. Maybe possessed Bowser, probably normal we Bowser, know. we'll see. So he, the, the Flower Kingdom is a new kingdom. 
neighbors the Mushroom Kingdom because we can see the Mushroom Kingdom in the background of the first level. Uh huh. It's either like connected along the coast or it's like across the water, yet to be seen. We we see this kingdom. It's got these uh, these toad equivalents that are flower esque. They live in flower houses instead of mushroom houses. We've seen this little wiggler prince. I'm like I'm I'm well, calling him a prince, guy. but he looks like a prince. Assuming he's a he's he. got like a crown itch kind of thing. Yeah, he's got a crown, uh, and he looks quite young. So I'm gonna call Prince Wiggler on this one, uh, Prince of the Flower Kingdom. Yep. Apparently, his flower changes. I didn't notice that. Oh, really? Yeah. He has flower in the key art. Huh. And no and flower no in the trailer. Huh. I didn't even know he's in the trailer. Is he in yeah, the trailer? Yeah, he, he kind of appears at the end of the level when Mario, Peach, Luigi, and Yellow Toad are uh, cheering. Okay. Um, All right. But yeah, so it's it's got like a, a new wonder seed thing, and uh, I'm so glad I'm so wonder glad flower. that with every new mainland Mario game, the internet gets to make another hilarious joke, and this time it's gonna be Mario's on LSD. <laughs> Whoa! Yeah, because I'm down there, Mario. <laughs> he takes this this flower, and the whole world goes uh, cuckoo crazy, as Mario would say. It goes a little say. wacky. <laughs> um, yeah, so so the, it, it, it it everything gets eyes like like Mario Kart Double Dash. I'm guessing they use some mm -hmm. of those wonder flowers in that game too. Yeah, I mean everything kind of comes to life and and moves around. And there's these weird talking flowers that I I really don't like the voices of. They're kind of annoying. Yeah, they sound bad. <laughs> and I usually like like companion characters like this, but they're kind of uh, they they're just not good. They don't sound good. Um, <laughs> I think they I think they should be all uh, burned. <laughs> Hopefully they're optional. You can turn them off in this in the uh, in this options maybe. Yeah, uh, toads have legs in uh, in both RPG and well the, in the original RPG they had legs, but in RPG yeah. and in uh, Wonder, they they yeah. have legs. This really is a new era of Mario. It really is. I mean, it's it's really nice to to see it because I, I think there's like one moment in the trailer where um the flower's voice kind of works. And it's for like that deadpan joke at the end, just like that Goomba looks so serene. Well then, <laughs> that, that was kind of funny. I thought it was funny that the flower got cut off, so it didn't have to talk for that long. <laughs> that Goomba looks so so well then. Oh yeah, and of course the playable characters. We've got uh, we've got Mario, Luigi, uh, Blue Toad, and Yellow Toad. It seems um, mm -hmm. Peach, Daisy, and uh, that's and uh, four different colors of of Yoshi. Yoshi, yeah. And you can actually... He looks you, so good now. You can he ride the so playable good. Yoshis, it seems. Uh, just like in Crafted yeah. World, where they could ride each other. So, I mean, it's 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 interesting. Yoshi has a new Wait, voice on, <laughs> as well. Maybe it's just like a... Maybe it's a cast wide recast. I'd hate that, but maybe that's what's going on here. I, I doubt it, because I think the others are probably the same. Toad is definitely normal. And yeah, Yoshi looks more like his uh, 2D art and his like classic design, which is great. Art, because which is I, so nice. Yoshi's model kind of sucks, so... I think I think Nintendo struggled to make Yoshi look good, like yeah, since for, for a long time. Since yeah. like Yoshi's but story, I think they managed. They finally cracked it. I think. Yeah, I he mean, looks great. It works here. Um, he looks he looks loopy again, <laughs> which is so nice. <laughs> we've seen sort of situational transformations. It seems so like uh, at certain points you can like glide with your hat. Peach gets her own hat with her emblem at those sections. Mario turns into like a spiky ball and and bowls around the place, and uh, of course Mario becomes an elephant. <laughs> uh, that was the best moment of the Nintendo Direct, uh, where the two guys, you know, those two fellows, you know, even knows the name of at the, at the end, were just like, "Whoa, what a crazy trailer!" Mario became an elephant. <laughs> yeah, they they brought up they were like uh, they were like Mario became an elephant. Flowers were talking, and Daisy was playable. <laughs> <laughs> It really did sound like they were also watching the trailer for the first time and didn't know what to make of it. It was it was just good. It was a really good reveal. It was really, really good. Um, I am terrified for Elephant Peach. Yeah. <laughs> I'm hoping <laughs> they touch up the models a little bit because I think, like, Peach looks weirdly short. It's like when people mod Waluigi and Wario into New Super Mario Bros. Wii and they've got these really, like, off-putting proportions that look wrong. Yeah. Um, and if you if you look at the renders of the game, they everyone looks normal. So I don't know why they look so weird within the game itself. If this I is, just noticed. If I this just, is how I they just, look. I didn't even think of Elephant Yoshi. Oh my god. That's <laughs> <laughs> what is that even gonna be? I, I think maybe Yoshi can't maybe Yoshi can't use uh, power-ups. Yeah, he might be the Nabbit. Yeah, I yeah. think that's probably the case. I hope that's the case. 
<laughs> didn't uh, didn't Miyamoto mention in like an interview way back when he was like we wanted Peach to be playable in Super Mario Brothers games, but it didn't because like her dress would be completely different physics from everyone else. I think she meant, it was something like that. Some it was, weird they couldn't animate the dress correctly when she was running. And I, I think that. So was I wonder if like I wonder if the height difference might be something to help that. I kind of doubt it because in like New Super Mario Bros. U, Peachette is there, and Peachette is, mm -hmm. you know, based on Peach, and she looks just fine. So I yeah. think it is just like a. I think it's a stylistic choice rather than anything else, but it still doesn't look quite right. And I'm like, mm -hmm. if if this is how I, it I looks, I noticed. If this is how it looks in this game, then I hope that it's like a one-time thing rather than like a recurring a franchise-wide shift. Yeah. I did notice one thing in the trailer. Where yeah. um, when they grab the uh, the wonder flower is that what it's called? I think so, yeah. And like during the boulder chasing part, uh, when the port, when, when the first player grabs the flower, all of them get teleported to the boulder chase segment. Yeah. So it's less of a power up and more like a kind of everyone has to be here. We're in the mini game time now. Yeah, it's like a it's like a level altering event. Um, what I do like yeah. though is that there seems to be like a lot more events in the levels as and the characters react to them like when we see the the boulder coming all the characters like jump up surprises it was really nice the levels seem more dynamic yeah yeah also those look like christmas trees in the background yeah i was i was actually looking at those earlier it was like cogs and uh i thought it was like sap or something or like wax oh yeah it could be it's kind of oh i don't like that now it's kind of gross looking <laughs> Going back to the to the voice thing, there there are a couple of, of voice lines in this trailer. Most of them sound fine, but uh, a couple of Mario's lines. Owie like, sounds uh, weird. Yeah. Ooh, wowie zowie! It like wasn't. <laughs> wasn't yes. Mario. My hope is Charles Martinet. I hope he was just having an off day <laughs> when he was recording that. He just wasn't feeling it. Yeah, I hope that it's still Charles and he's just wrong. I would rather. I would rather that it's Charles and that he had an off day than them recasting Charles. Like, in general, I think, I would rather Charles have a kind of off Mario voice than somebody else replacing Charles and having, like, a better voice. Yeah. And it's probably a, a controversial <laughs> opinion. No, no, honestly, I think the exact same. Like, I would rather Charles l completely lose, like, how to do Mario, but still keep doing it than, like, anyone else doing it while he still could. Yeah, I think... I think he, even if his voice changes slightly, like in Luigi's Mansion 3, it's clearly not the same Luigi that, that he did uh, in, in New Super Mario Bros. Wii uh, 10 years prior, but it's, yeah, you you know, you, you can still tell it's Luigi, he's still got that soul. Um, yeah, I was hoping, like I've mentioned this, I was thinking this to myself the whole time, I was like, Luigi's Mansion 3, Luigi sounds so different. Yeah. Like, he, he kind of, <laughs> yeah, he's, kinda he's, he's, he's like, oh yeah. Ah. Yeah, there's yeah. It's, it's a lot. There's a lot more throatiness in it. Yeah. Whereas normally uh, Luigi's before. like, oh yeah. Whereas Luigi's Mansion Three yeah, is like throwing it back. Know. Oh yeah. So it's like it's oh. a very it's a very obviously <laughs> different direction, and I hope that's what this is. Like it's not like a new voice. It's just Charles trying to change it up. Yeah. I would hope it's that. Yeah. It could be. It could be the case that maybe because the game is so different in terms of style, um, that they were like, okay, we'll maybe change up Mario's voice a bit for this uh, game. Yeah, and I think the main thing to point out, right, is like most of the voice clips sound so close to the matinee that it would be weird if it was just an impersonator, you know? Most of them are pretty good. Most of the, the woo, wahoo, most of those are really yeah. good. Uh, it's yeah, like that, like that. Well, you just did like that. Yeah. Clips clips of them, uh, clips of the, uh, specifically like the wowie zowie are just kind of, <laughs> or like the, <laughs> when he says, when he says wonderful in the Japanese trailer, that sounds really off. Like that's, that's yeah. completely even more than the mm -hmm. wowie zowie you know is, basically what i'm hoping is i hope this is this is charles and you know in a year or two we can look back and go hey remember that time we thought charles got recast because he sounded really weird <laughs> yeah <laughs> well because well, he sounded really weird and because some nintendo of america employee did wario's voice in a <laughs> nintendo i mean if if wario if that like wario clip wasn't there i don't think anybody would be uh saying this yeah, you know, no. I think people would probably be like, okay, you know, maybe Mario sounds a little weird, but it's probably just an off day. But yeah. the Wario is just wouldn't like... it be weird? <laughs> oh yeah, wouldn't it be weird if like Charles Martinet got recast, but only as Wario? 
That would be awful. That'd be weird. <laughs> That'd be so weird. I'm more concerned about the way Wario sounds in that direct than the way Mario sounds at the moment. Oh, honestly, genuinely, yeah. And yeah, people people keep saying like, uh, oh, it's you know, it's obviously Charles. Just that, that uh, you know, they've been reusing the same voice clips for the last decade, as if we didn't hear him in the Mario movie like, like four months ago. <laughs> yeah. No, he was he wasn't in that. That was <laughs> that was Chris Pratt. Remember? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, I, th I think we've, we've kind of covered everything, haven't we? Yeah, yeah, I think that's everything. Uh, you know, except for the, the, the game that we thought was, looked the best, which is a Detective Pikachu. We, we both really liked that, didn't we? I love Detective Pikachu. I think, uh, yeah. it's, it's, it's come a long way from the first one. Graphically, mm -hmm. looks it like, looks, looks so different, superior. You know? Uh, like, it just looks, slightly, just slightly yeah. above the, the original. <laughs> Barely. Uh, I thought Ryan Reynolds took a very brave approach with, with the voice this time. Yeah. Quite different from his uh -huh. usual stuff, you know. I think it was. Uh, I think it was quite brave. Yeah. No. Uh, uh, yeah. I think Ryan Reynolds. Uh, I didn't sound like him, which is just so impressive, really. And uh, and I think it's great when he went. Whoa! It's Mew too. <laughs> yeah. We're just we're just so used to hearing the same Ryan Reynolds voice clips for the last <laughs> years. I feel yeah, like uh, I feel it. like this is this is it. This is the end of the line for us. Yeah, we started being sarcastic about games we don't like, so I think it's probably a sign that we're done. <laughs> okay, so uh, final final. What's your what's your what's your biggest uh, game from the direct? Uh, I'm gonna be on. I'm gonna be like boring and say Mario Run. <laughs> oh, Mario Wonder. <laughs> <laughs> I was so excited about Mario Run in the direct. Uh, but I think I'm gonna be, I don't know if this is a controversial uh, one, but I'm going to say the second place is actually WarioWare. I'm very happy. Wow. Yeah. That is. Uh, uh... Playing get, playing get it together got me like so into WarioWare. I will like pick up get it together and just play it idly, like even up to this day. Yeah. No, <laughs> I still I, just I play it a lot it. too. Um, I like I was uh, getting into the original as well on, on GBA. It's so fun. Yeah. It's it's great. WarioWare has yeah. always been because like my first WarioWare that I owned was DIY, and that's like such a different yeah. WarioWare experience from mm -hmm. every, from everything else, you know. So for me, it's really hard because I, you know, as it's, the it's, Mario boy, it's, it's so great, hard to choose. Such great games. Um, as the Mario boy, I'm gonna say uh, Pikmin Four. <laughs> <laughs> that's fair. Yeah, yeah, I'm super excited for Pikmin Four. Pikmin um, 2, too. I, I'm super excited to play Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon on Switch, to play Mario RPG, to play Super Mario Bros. Wonder. So... Yeah. Super Mario Run. <laughs> between between now and then, uh, I guess we're just, we're just going to be waiting. We'll be sure to dig into the lore for yeah. all you people out and, there. And then you can finally figure out where it goes on the timeline. <laughs> okay. I've been Sean D. Walsh. This has been Might Be Kiroon. We'll see you guys later.